Hey guys, Call here, and today I will be going over my Math Light data pack. I have had this thing out and around for quite a while, but I just never got around to making a video on how to use it because um, it's pretty easy to use. But we'll just cover what it has. It will probably get new stuff added to it if I need new math stuff, but this covers most of what I've needed in the past. So it's just light, so it covers the most basic stuff while doing it in kind of the least commands as possible and hopefully the most efficient way as possible. Um, but sometimes it I favored the least commands over um, something that's more efficient but a lot more complicated and takes more commands to do. Uh, so I tried to strike a good balance. So here we have power and root, which is a classic to have. So if I click this button, it is uh, it does it calculates in so the so the syntax of this is you have a math scoreboard that is created and you have in in and uh, multiple ins and out so in is set to 13 in one is set to three so that means it's 13 to the power of three which gives you 2197 so that's pretty simple uh, and the way that that works is it gives you some information on how to how it works here um, but it's very simple it actually uses um, it's it establishes some fake players and then runs the power function which is very simple it's three commands it uses recursion to perform this operation so what it does is it essentially sets up um, X number of function calls and for each function call it will do this multiplication of uh, the out and this in um, that many times so for example uh, let's say n1 is 3. Uh, so then it decides to basically run this exact function three times, uh, but it isn't able to get to this multiplication until it's done uh, with this loop. And then when it's done with that, it'll run this on the, uh, like all these at once. Uh, so that's that one. Very simple. Then you have the square root. So I put the square root of 160. So the method for this guy is you just put in as your number to get the square root of and your output will be a number with two decimal precision uh, and it uses a newton raphson approach which i'll discuss really briefly uh, but here's our number in is 160 so out is 12.64 and uh, we don't have to know the real number answer for this i mean i guess we can uh, so let's pull up a calculator so let's go with 160 and square root and you'll see our answer here is 12.649 uh, so this gives you two decimals, and uh, I'm pretty sure that it does not round, so you're just getting this bit. And it's also not 100% accurate. The bigger the number is that you shove into the square root, uh, the less accurate it will be. And um, that's just because of the method that it uses. But you can see here that it only took 33 commands to run, which is pretty good. That's a very low amount for a pretty good you know, approximation here. It is math light. It's not math accurate. Um, so yeah, so it does the square root and it's 12.64. So there's the two digits here of precision. Um, how it works is pretty simple. So you take the number, you scale the number up. So this is how we're going to get our decimals of precision back. Uh, and then we set an initial guess for what we think the answer will be. So we just put 12.55 and we run four iterations of Newton Raphson. And um, if the number in in is exceedingly large, we decide to run two more uh, values of newton raphson So basically, we do four iterations of newton raphson but if it's really big, it'll do another. And if it's really, really big, it'll do another. And I just did some experiments to see what typically gave me good results. And that's what I chose for this. If it's bigger than uh, 100,000 divided by 10,000, uh, so if it's if it's bigger than like I think it has to be if it's bigger than like a thousand block uh, like as your input or ten thousand then it will decide to um, it'll just give you the best it can which won't be amazing and then also what it does is it uh, gives you the out math it basically makes sure that the output is positive and then restores your input so what a Newton Raphson is is a very simple four command uh, calculation. So you do a is equal to a plus b over 2 and it's iterative. So uh, we shove a into this, we use this equation to adjust a, uh, and then we put that on to where we came from. So what this does is we take b, 
uh, we calculate B, B is equal to N over A. So then we calculate A plus B, and then we divide the thing by two, and then that's our new value of A. So that is the kind of basic stuff. So now you have trig. So trig is an entity-based form because this is where I decided to pick the least commands because to do this trig stuff, there is more efficient ways, but probably the best like fast way to do it is just using an area effect cloud. So if there isn't one already, it spawns an area effect cloud that will be used always. What it does to that area effect cloud is it teleports it with carrots forward one. Um, it stores the rotation on like it basically so it rotates it based off of what degree you put in, then it moves forward by one and calculates the x and z distance that it traveled so for cosine it's the x distance and sine is the z distance because the definition of a cosine of theta is the adjacent over hypotenuse and in this case we set the hypotenuse to one uh, so your calculations are just going to work out to be x or z and then tangent your calculations is going to be x over z so let's go ahead and set the cosine of 30 is 8 point zero point eight six six and again you have three decimals of precision here uh, so that's one thing to note so you have 866 but it's point eight six six this one is point four 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 nine nine which is not perfect so this this solution is going to be very close within you know point zero zero two then if you take the tangent of 30 that's point five seven six so now if you go to 45 degrees you have 707 707 that makes sense because that is square root of two over two and then you have one, which makes sense. All right, so if you have 60, then these are just inverted from before, except you're off by 0 0.002 for the sign. Uh, and then your tangent is uh, 1.7, no, 1.728. So if we go 60, and then we go, boop, uh, where is it? Scientific, trigonometric, Tangent, 60 tangent, 1.732. So we're off by a little bit there, so 0 0.004. Um, but yeah, they're pretty accurate, and they work for the whole circle. So uh, I can just do, I can go like 135, and that's going to give me negative, positive, and negative. So it, it keeps the sign for the whole rotation circle. Uh, yeah. So that's how the trig was in, implemented. And now everybody's favorite, the RNG. So the RNG I made a video on, it's the LCG RNG. Essentially what you do is you grab a random seed, a random number to start at from some entity when the world first loads the data pack. And then we take that number and we bounce it around by multiplying it by a really big constant. So really big constant, the number will wrap. You really won't know where you are unless you knew what the number is. You can't predict the output. And uh, when you go ahead and take it to a range, uh, you do some stuff that makes sense with um, the percent of the range. So to use this, well, let me just go over how to use this. So if you just run LCG, it'll give you a random number on out. If you just run function RNG LCG, you get a random number. Um, but if you run RNG and you set in to your lower bound, in one to your upper bound, then your output will be a random number between those two bounds. So now we have three, four, five, seven, three, seven, six. Okay, so you get a random number between those bounds. Uh, one of the key features of this guy is it uses the uh, Java, I think, Java libraries implementation. So it uses this function right here, but in Minecraft commands, actually quite simply. Um, so you run the LCG and uh, then you do the percent stuff, which some people might be familiar with how to do a range, but there's a special um, caveat here. Uh, so if we go to Z private next int, where is it? Uh, yeah, that's just right here. Uh, there's a caveat. So there's a condition where if you use the percent of a, and you use the modulo for the range, then what it's gonna do is your number sometimes is biased towards small numbers. So it detects the bias using this formula. Uh, and when this condition is met, which is right here, then we need to get a new random number. So basically this will loop a few times or one time. A lot of times it's one time. So you can see here it just took 20 commands, uh, but sometimes it takes there like two iterations. So that's 42. Uh, 
uh, but it's usually one to two iterations to get a number that's nice, depending on what your range is. Uh, but it's not too bad for a command count for your random number in a range. All right, so that's how to use the math pack. That's all the different functions explained. And uh, if I add anything new, you can just simply go to the function, just like in here, go to one of them, and it will tell you roughly how it works using the terms of in and in one and out. Uh, now, as a side note, to use this in your pack, just go to data, click on the math, copy that bad boy, go into anything you want here. Let's go to BSC test data, and we paste it into ours. And then we go to Minecraft tags, functions, load, and we need to add the math to our load, which the math name is Z private slash init with the math name space. And then now it will work in this data pack. So that's all you needed to know. Thanks for watching. Uh, the download link will be in the description. On, it's on my GitHub site uh, and it has version control here. Uh, anyways, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.